Hey, I'm Bob Runkel. And for as long as I can remember, I've loved pop culture. Despite the challenges I've faced in my life, pop culture has always been there for me. I love talking to people and being a platform for others to share their thoughts and stories. Because if there's one thing I never get tired of, it's seeing driven, talented, and inspiring individuals follow their dreams, no matter what obstacles are in their way. And I know a thing or two about that. Welcome to the DJ Bob Show. I'm DJ Bob. Roll it. The DJ Bob Show. Pop culture, past and present. Now, here's your host, DJ Bob. Okay, let me tell you what you're going to get in this episode. You're going to get lots of talk about the Rugrats reboot with the executive producers, Eric Casmiro and Kate Boudelier. You're going to get some as told by Ginger talk, because they both worked on it. You're going to get a meaningful conversation, and you're going to get a lot of me freaking out. Rugrats was a huge part of my childhood, and I fanboyed really hard, which I think makes this conversation all the more meaningful. So I hope you enjoy it. And watch Rugrats streaming now on Paramount Plus. Do it now. So, first of all, thank you guys for joining me today. It's definitely wonderful to have you guys here. Oh, thanks for having us. That's very nice to speak with you. So, before we get into the nitty gritty of the new show, if if you were to switch bodies with one of the babies, which one would you want to be for a day? <laughs> I'll let you take that one, Kate. Well, you know I'm going to say Angelica. Mm. I love Angelica. She's just, she's always thinking. She's got plans. She's on the move. She has Cynthia as her best friend. She, I don't like her mean side, but I like her, I like her imagination and creativity, I guess I should say. And she's lovable in some way, in some way, shape, or form. We like to think so, and we like to show that. I'm glad you noticed that. Thank you. We 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 may not always see it, but it's there. Eric, what would you what would you say? Who would be who would who would you switch? I I, I think I mean Chucky is one of my favorites, but I don't know if I want to switch bodies with him. I'd probably go with Phil because nothing seems, everything sort of, Phil takes everything in stride and I appreciate that. I think it wouldn't be bad. And you, know, you always have a, sn- a snack in your diaper at the ready. Yeah, but you would also be in- inhaling questionable things like worms and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we'll, I'll eat a peck of dirt before we die, my friend. Okay. So my next question for you is why this why this reboot now? Well, I I think it's 30 years since the original was first launched, which um, you know, uh it is certainly a lot in the world has changed in those 30 years. And um and where it's a, it's such a crown jewel and Nickelodeon's um, a library, I, it, it seems logical at this moment to sort of take a new swing and bring it up to date with all the, you know, all the things that make life different now. We also thought, Bob, that the, 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 the adults the, who grew up with Rugrats could possibly be now in a position to be having their own children. And it, we thought it might be sort of amusing for them to see you know, people their age going through, um, you know, having the Rugrats again. So, you know, by keeping the babies who they are, but updating the adults to the, to the age of the, of the original fans seemed like a a fun way to revisit um, the show. And you both have such a unique perspective as far as working on 
the original as well, because many of these reboots nowadays don't have the original team intact. But is there anything when you were looking, when you were looking at rebooting this and watching some of the old stuff and says, okay, this doesn't work now? Are there any specific things that wouldn't work in today's landscape that you had to like fine tune? Yeah, I mean, first there was not so much fine tune as like technology, right? Um, in the original, Charlotte is the only character who has a cell phone. And there was no home technology. We really, I, I don't remember, correct me if I'm wrong, Kate, I don't even think we ever showed a, a computer or anything in the original, did we? It was, no. So Only in the very end towards the movies, we showed, we thought about having Chaz do online dating. Mm, oh, that's yeah, right. that's right. That's right. That's in Paris. That's right. But yeah. They, we never showed a computer um, that I can recall. And, and certainly, as you said, the only phone was Charlotte and it was giant. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was our, our first update. And, and as well as some just logical updates. A, a lot's been talked about with Grandpa Lou, but his age, he would no longer have, be in the current era a, uh, a veteran of World War II. He wouldn't even be a veteran probably of any war if he's, you know, uh, 69 or 70. So that we had to adjust for that. And um, and Charlotte as the working woman, that's not so, you know, that's not so, un, you know, you don't see women in business, you know, with neckties now and being the only woman in the corporate world. So we, we updated her character uh, right away. Those were two 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 updates to the adults. And I and I think it's rather interesting that you talk about computers not being implemented in the original show because they were like these big brick things in offices. And it wasn't really until the show we close to its end that it went to the mainstream. So um it's very important to adapt to the times and make sure that the millennials that grew up with it see their lives are represented through these characters. That, that's correct. And also, as you recall, Dee Dee got a lot of her parenting advice from Dr. Lipschitz, who we, was created as a parenting guru. But now uh, millennials go to many sources, um, you know, blogs, mommy blogs and daddy blogs and and the internet. So it, it made sense that there wasn't just one Lipschitz, there's all kinds of experts, and she has her own um, blogs and, and podcasts and things. So we wanted that to be reflected accurately. So, you know, when you're writing, when you're working on this new show and you're, right, you're, you're in the writer's room and you're getting these stories together, what fundamentals have to stay the same? And what can you kind of... What can you kind of update and make more fun? Like, were there any things, okay, we have to try this because we didn't get to do this the first time around? Well, I, I think uh, one that the one that came to mind very early uh, was the idea of, as Eric said, having a home uh, a virtual assistant device. Most kids are familiar with uh, the, you know, Alexa or Google assistant. So we created our own version and it made sense that since Angelica watches, you know, her uh, uncle Stu order something and then it arrives, it made sense for the babies to think that must be, that thing must be a genie. And if you ask it for something there, it's going to show up. And so we can kind of spoof the modern era of instant gratification of ordering something and it shows up the next day in our, our world, it shows up a little faster, but it's a typical baby misunderstanding of, you know, they see something that talks, takes orders from Angelica and things arrive. So the story itself wouldn't have been told before because we didn't have that device, but the concept of the babies misinterpreting something and then going into a fantasy in which they try to find their own magical genie. The fantasies were, you know, 
um, brought back from the original. So that that remains the same, but where we go with it is is very different and and hopefully very fun for today's kids. I mean, I think that it's really it's really smart. And um, one of my favorite moments, without giving too much away, is um, there is a further exploration into the world of online dating. <laughs> yes, why not, and, right? And I thought that that was very fun. <laughs> good, good. And uh, the babies are um, playing with electronic devices as they do possibly in the not possibly in the ways that their parents might freak out about later but (laughs) you know I mean it's so cool that this stuff is being implemented because it needs to be to reflect with what's going on in our culture it's I mean we don't do stories um, too much based around the, because the babies are still, you know, except for Angelica under, you know, two, they're not going to, the parents aren't going to be putting them, you know, too much on a tablet or anything. Um, once in a while, we show a fun thing on a tablet that would reflect what a toddler might be seeing. And we have fun with that. But um, so it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't take over our writer's uh, room thinking, but it, it enhances it, I would say. So did you guys squeal when you heard the character, when you heard the voice actors do the voices again after after so many years? What's it like having the original voice cast back? It was it was it was really lovely. I mean, you know, you hear when you hear those voices, um, they're so uh, unmistakably part of that original. And uh and it was there, were, you know, a couple of moments that the, you know, the hairs on your arm stood up because it was just like, you know, visiting a friend after twenty something years. Um, it was it was kind of special. It's so nice because it's like visiting. As Eric said, you're visiting two friends. You're visiting the the character, and then the the actress who portrays that character, who we work with so so closely on the originals, movies and series, and they're rediscovering the character or bringing it back, or maybe it never left them. They're, they're also wonderful. And then we're hearing it again and hearing new things. And it just, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I'd, I'd say that it makes me teary sometimes when I hear it. And it's, um, and I think they're also, uh, you know, happy to be back and, and it. so that, that shows in the performance and it, in, in it, and it just always, always hearing the voices helps the writing because then you remember the kind of things that these characters, how they speak, and then it just stays in your head and you go for it. You know, they they define the comedy in their performance. Hmm. And, and in the process itself, I mean, because of the way, not only during COVID restrictions of records, but... You know, oftentimes the animators will will uh, read a line for one of the babies um, so that they have something to storyboard to. And and if there's ever a, an example of what the baby should not sound like, try as they might, there's nothing like the original, right? The original voice is always, always so great and can sell a very simple line as, as a joke, even if it's not intended as one. With that being said, you know, you have a whole crop of new voice cast for the parents and other characters. But somehow they magically capture the same essence of the original characters, just upgraded as millennials rather than, you know, previous generations. So can you kind of go into specifics about finding that voice cast and what you were looking for? Well, first of all, thank you for saying that um, they've captured it because we 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 like to think they did too. We we really we I think because we we wanted to honor the original, but of course, you know, make the voice quality and the attributes, you know, some some new things as well. And um, so 
we kind of, to me, looked for the voice that fit our new character more than, there was no sound alikes, you know, with the original cast. Uh, we wanted to just be, fit the characters. And um, of course the design is uh, very much the, close to the old design, but but I, I think we approached it more from the new characters. Yeah, you say, I, I, I think so. I mean, we knew some of the core attributes the characters had. So, um, but they, I, it, yeah, I, I feel like we, we, and we also leaned on actors and actresses from the comedy space, which thinking back to the original, I don't know what's true of everyone on that original um, adult cast had come from um, comedy necessarily. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice to to hear that you saw the similarities in the original because we we really didn't want their core personality to change all that much. I mean, I think Stu is a good example of a, a character. The character is still the same as he has that enthusiasm almost you know childlike at times for his inventions and his his family and his creations but where our original actor Jack Riley who we loved had a deadpan delivery our new Stu is a little more you know um buoyant and it still to us matches the look of Stu and he's like a big kid <laughs> exactly exactly and again our original Stu also had that quality, but he also could go to a place that was very uh, <laughs> droll and, as I said, deadpan and just flat, and and in a it, and it, which made it funny. But it just we didn't. We knew we couldn't. We could never imitate it. So why not go with a slightly different direction? Totally. I mean, so you're saying that, and so basically, you're not gonna get a recreation of the chocolate pudding moment. No. Yeah. <laughs> really not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, but you could still do that. That I, I can imagine our new Stu, he might be a little more whiny than uh, in his character than desperate the way, uh, yeah, I've lost control of my life, which is, uh, yeah. I think we could still do that scene though uh, in a new way. So something very important about Rugrack were those like emotional episodes, like the Mother's Day one with Chucky's mom and, you know, finding out about that. Are there going to be those moments that tug at the heart in these new, in this new iteration? Um, do you plan on focusing on those kind of serious topics that kids need to hear about? Well, um, not, not to probably the extreme of Mother's Day, which was done in, as a way also to not only set up the movie because there was some ambiguity about Chucky's mom in the original. Um, we weren't sure if she was, in, in the early episodes, it was a little unclear if she was just, if they were divorced or if she had passed. So we, we sort of claimed the territory that she had passed. Um, and we sort of, correct me if I'm wrong, Kate, I think like the holiday special is one that sort of feels the most emotional so far. Um, and, and, and that is Dee Dee facing the, the fact that she is of a mixed faith home and Hanukkah and Christmas come with their own traditions and she wants the first um, holiday for Tommy for both faiths to be special. So that's, I guess that at an emotional level, that's one that's about something very personal for Dee Dee, but not necessarily uh, one of the heavy baby stories in that way. And that, and I can't wait to see that because that has, that sounds like it got, it packed the same punches. The moments that I love from the original show as well. Cool, cool. Thank you, we hope so. Yeah, I mean, I think we will, we're hoping for um, some surprises that may remind people of some of the uh, 
emotional journeys, uh, characters, whether it be a, a new character, a, 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 someone getting married, someone adding to their family, we don't want to say, but there will be, we hope, those, those big moments. Um, uh, for now, I think we're just focusing on getting these, these new regrets, you know, back in the world and uh, with these updates we've mentioned to the characters and to the times. And how does it feel to be in a world where, you know, black characters and animation are so widespread and you guys kind of introduced the, one of the first main black kid characters on TV, cartoon? Well, we, we t- Susie is such an important character for for all those reasons you mentioned and, and, and others as a, as a, you know, counterbalance to Angelica as a character with the other babies um, and her family. We, we brought a little more into the friend, well, a lot more, I should say, into the friend group. So we're making them more peers than, so um, that was a, an update we were very conscious and, and happy to do because um, Susie wasn't in every single uh, episode before, and now now we can say she is, <laughs> which we love. I mean, if there's one thing, if there's one thing that I love about Daddy, yeah, I'm all about inclusion, whether it be race and disability inclusion. So as long as you know people are being represented in the right way. I'm happy. And that is, that's so good to hear. And, and it's a really, it's super important to us too, Bob, and all of Nickelodeon as well, that, that the characters on screen represent the world at large, right? And, um, and so, as Kate was saying, you know, we made sm- slight modifications to Susie so that um, she could be in all the episodes all the time because before, as you know, she was... Angelica's age and could speak to parents and could basically give away the plot, <laughs> typically Angelica's evil plot at hand. And now with her being slightly younger in the reboot, she can't give away Angelica's plot. So she can be firmly part of the solution with the babies, which was, uh, it was a bit liberating for us in that way. You touched on this briefly, but I kind of want to delve more deeper into this. What what was it like working on the show in the in the midst of COVID? Because it was developed, but it was kind of announced, and then it just kind of. But I feel like production really picked up when COVID happened, or a bit before that. It, you did. It definitely was the bulk of it was since COVID. I mean, we had the we were fortunate enough to have a few. Gosh, what would you say, Kate? Maybe. Eight of the carts were recorded before COVID, somewhere about somewhere around there. Right. And 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 writing wise, we were we had only had the benefit of one group writer's room, not not the many we would have hoped. But you know, like everything, we we recorded remotely. We um actually in some ways we like it better. Our voice director uh can now look at he can see all of <laughs> he's not looking at the actor he's looking we're all looking at each other so he can see on my face if <laughs> at eric's <laughs> face how we feel about it the re it's a shorter and so can the actor and it's it, once the technical part got ironed out which i know nothing about um <laughs> and and the same with you know meeting with uh, looking, we review the material. We look at the animation as it comes in. As a group, we're all sort of just looking at it together. So you know, um, I'd say it didn't slow us down too much. I mean, I feel like Zoom has become extremely popular in COVID times. Oh yeah, and for sure, it's probably been a big help for you guys to connect i mean that can't work connecting right now so it's such a 
it's so I'm so thankful that we have technology like this to be able to create and to be able to uh, get stuff out there. For sure. I think where where it hurts our production a little is that we have a great design team in right at the studio, and we would and our art director, and we would have in the past been able to just walk down to their office and say, "I'm thinking of doing a stew invention that involves." you know, multiple robo arms and how do you, and, you know, just to have that quick moment of check-in and inspiration from our artists it, who are so great on this show because it's, you know, in this new form of CG. I think that's what I felt I missed out on the most. Um, that connection with our, our crew, um, that excitement of, you know, look, we're all looking at this for the first time in the room and we can all, gasp mm. and excitement at this beautiful new character or design now we look at it on zoom we're all on mute so there's not there's no, you know we're all trying to so hard to you know uh you know stay in the correct um <laughs> little square give, <laughs> give a thumb up yeah exactly yeah. i mean there was a there was a cool thing that happened though and that was you know while we were limited by meeting size depending on the on the the room, the conference room uh, size. And so our art director would only be able to have like a fraction of the art team in a meeting to go through notes. But with Zoom, he could invite the entire team who couldn't fit in a conference room, but on Zoom, as you know, you're just a box. And that was kind of cool because people who weren't part of the process or wouldn't have been part of the process necessarily in in the building got to be a part of it in Zoom. So if there was a silver lining, it was those kind of moments. Yeah, I think it's fun. They get to hear our response. You know, people like the lighting team have worked so hard and making our sets look beautiful and our, our just everything on this show, the costumes for the fantasies. And I think you're right. There's a, they can sort of firsthand see our reactions to it. Um, so, but you know, we miss the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> of course, donut Tuesday, donut Friday, whatever that donut day was. Yeah, we used to have donuts once a week on a morning. That's sad. I forgot about that. But now, but now, when you guys go back, will you implement technology more for those that can't? Maybe so. I mean, that's a good point. We. We haven't really figured out what the back part looks like, to be honest, Bob, like how many people can be in a room and do, you know, all of those things are still being worked out as we speak. Um, but there will be definitely a new way of working on the other side of this when we're even when we're back in the building and hopefully a way that is really inclusive for people who, even if they can't fit in the room, they can still be at the meeting. What is your favorite moment from the new show so far from what we've uh, seen. Because mm. mm. I know you could probably spoil 10, tens of thousands of things. But. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have a favorite, but I'm not allowed to talk about it, Bob, because it hasn't happened yet. We can't announce that story yet, but there is something that comes along that is definitely, um, it makes me, it makes me giggle every time I watch it. Um, huh. Well, Let's talk about as a pilot, I would say I I love um, you know, the first time we see Tommy just take out that screwdriver and now it's a talking screwdriver and he just holds it up like the old Tommy, you know, baby's gotta do. But I also love there's a moment with the adults all get together, they're at a concert and they it's just so fun to see this and they're all singing this song and just to to look at them as this unit of friends that are raising their kids together and dropping them off, you know, at each other's houses. And it, I really saw the potential of what we have um, and what was obviously from what was there before. I, I, I love the moment when she's, because it's always Angelica that makes me laugh, when she's gobbling the chocolates and she knows she's gotten in trouble, but she's like, she says, she, it's not polite to speak with your mouth full, as she says through a full mouth of chocolate. Yeah. That, yeah. That's like one of those moments that I just, a classic Angelica that I just adore. 
but yeah, we, it's, you know, there, I, I think um, I'm just continually amazed when I see the animation because it's, it is so different and yet it's familiar and, and the same, it fits to me. And I'm just in awe of what our team has done to make it come alive. So, uh, and I'm not just saying that, I really do mean it. I, every time I look at it, I, I see things I didn't see before. So that's been fun for me. So what is, what is Rugrag taught you after all these years? Huh. That's a good question. I, I think, I think on one hand, it's because we were tasked with doing so many episodes the first time around. I think um, on a practical level, a well-designed character, you need well-designed characters and well-realized characters to be able to tell a hundred and two hundred stories with those characters. So I think that's taught us, you know, we, we, you know, inherited this development and this creation from Marlene and Gabor and Paul, and they, they really did the work early on to make sure it had all of the legs it needed to carry on for as long as it did. I, that's a really good point. The concept themselves of babies looking at this world through, you know, their, point of view and eyes um, opens your world up to the stories because if you look at something from a different point of view, you can see something, um, it, it, it brings out some new direction. I often say stories that happen on Rugrats wouldn't happen on other series because of that simple concept that it's the secret life of babies and what, how they see the world. Um, but I thought your question was, what did it teach us ourselves about our life? <laughs> I was going to say it teaches me the power of friendship. Boy, those, fr those yeah, friends, for sure. boy, they are loyal and they're a great group of friends. And that always warms my heart when the, when the babies have those moments where they're just so, they stand by each other. And I, I think that, you know, Rugrack is such an important show to me because you know it was one of the first things that because I'm the I'm the baby in my family so it's like the one of the first things that me and my sisters and myself can just enjoy together mm. and it's been it's been in my life for over 20 years at this point oh that's cool Thank you. And I feel like I feel like many people watching this reboot will have similar stories and it will they'll be able to share with their kids or their their nieces or their nephews and it'll be it's wonderful. What has the reaction been so far? I, I mean I, I you know I only peek a little bit at online because sometimes it's you know it's it's a rabbit hole to fall into but it's been really lovely there's been a lot of nice i've read a lot of really nice stuff about people feeling as though it captured the old show and and still looked great i mean a lot of people have commented on how great it looks which is undeniable because thanks to our our leadership uh from dave pressler and casey um but yeah i think um it's been, and certainly personally, a lot of people who I know who now have kids were looking forward to sharing it with them because the kids didn't know the original Rugrats. So for them, it was, they were really excited. So, of course, they're all biased because they're friends, but still. I mean, if anything, my, my two-year-old niece knows the characters by name. Oh, that's so cute. Wow. 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 So, it's young. So wow. it's, it's such a gift to be able to share it with her. And, oh, cool. Um, thanks for, you know, continuing the legacy. I mean, when they called you, you didn't have to bring, you didn't have to bring it back. But, you know, <laughs> were you as overjoyed as we were when you got that call? 
I, I would say it was probably more shock, right, Kate? And that was like, really? Um, <laughs> well, shock, but not after you thought about it a minute. You said, just for the reasons we stated earlier, why, of course, why not? But I had no hesitation that it would be um, a joy to tackle. Uh, it, it didn't even seem that hard to sit down and start you know, thinking of what we do and where we go, it, it, it just came out. It just flowed. Yeah, um, but we had to ask ourselves, Bob, like, why now, right? Like, the very thing. Imagine if someone came to you and said, okay, you're going to take something that was so beloved from so many years ago and you've got to make it new again. And we all know the, the entertainment landscape's full of reboots. And we're like, at one hand, you're like, okay, we know it'll be a joy because these characters were so fun. But there was a certain, um, anxiety is maybe too strong a word. But pressure? Pressure, yeah. There was pressure like, okay, you know, what is, what is the right degree of, of um, adjustment for today that doesn't go too far? But, you know, but also corrects. We had the benefit of knowing what was sometimes difficult in the past. Like, you know, Kate mentioned Grandpa Lou. In the original, as you know, he would fall asleep a lot and because he was an old curmudgeonly guy. And that's how the babies would get away with their hijinks. Well, and we didn't want to, we didn't love that he always had to fall asleep too because old people don't just fall asleep. But we thought, okay, if this is, if this guy's a veteran of Woodstock, he's going to be maybe one of those guys that's easily distracted and, you know, his, his train of thought can easily get um, derailed. And that can give you the same, the same license to let the babies get away from out from underneath his nose without having to rely on the old sleeping joke, you know, cause that got a little tired at times, I think. So totally switching topic. I just have to bring this up because I have you both here. One of my favorite things in the animation world, period, is as as told by Ginger. Hmm. Wow. And I wanted to talk a bit about that. And could you see that working now? Because huh. that was so unique to its time. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, and thank you for, uh, it's very dear to both our hearts and uh, had such a strong creative force with Emily Kapnick. I, I don't know because there's been a lot of middle school explorations perhaps since Ginger. That might be the hard part. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, when you think about all the details of the show. I mean, the thing that would be evergreen is, which we don't see enough of in, in animation, which was really important to us when we did it the first time around, is the idea of um, that not everyone is from the same social strata. And sometimes when you're, you know, when you're in junior high school, those shifting sands of, a, of, a, of alliances and, and, you know, and you're from a single parent household, which many kids are. I mean, those, those rites of passages in, for Ginger in particular, I think those same rites of passages still probably exist. They're just so different. And, and you know, it's funny. I can't imagine the world of Ginger with social media because it just would have, it's so different. So I don't know. That's a, it's a really good question. I hadn't really considered, but um, Courtney would have a bunch of social media followers. She would totally, she'd be such an influencer now, wouldn't she? <laughs> so true. That's so true. She might have a little more power. And then yeah, true. true. She needed more power, but it, it would definitely be, I think Carl and Hootsie could, could still exist in today's world. Totally. Uh, love of oddities because they'd be even more. I feel like he would be, they'd be like gamers. Yeah, they probably would be by today's standards, absolutely. Or Roblox creators. Uh huh. They'd be like streaming. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. I um, I mean, it was such a special show to me because for some reason, my my mom remembers mm -hmm. Rugrats, but for some reason, her her favorite 
thing that I watched was ginger. Oh, wow. That's really I have cool. no idea why. That's really cool. <laughs> so I would love to see something come of that at some point because it's not talked about that much. And I'm glad I got to shed some light on it today. Oh, cool. Cool. It's nice to hear that that show made an impact. I've heard that a lot from young people too, that um, there's something special about that show. So Because it was edgy, but not too edgy. Yeah. And it was just, it was, well, it, it was edgy because it was dealing with real feelings and real emotions, right? That we, in real life situations that whether, you know, um, you know, when Ginger invited her father to Thanksgiving or divorced father because she was afraid to be alone but didn't tell her mother, like those kind of things that you could, that are born from real feelings. Um, and, you know, it was probably one of the only shows I can think of that where characters changed costumes. Production hated us for it. But, you know, we were like, these kids are real kids. They can't wear the same clothes episode to episode. Carl and Hoodsy could because, you know, they're boys. But the girls, mm-hmm. like, you know, were always changing their outfits, which was really novel at the time. I and I totally agree because it was such. I mean, you you've had you had such a talented cast on that show too. I mean, Lorraine Newman, come on. I know it doesn't get any better, does it? But I just wanted to kind of detour for a second and talk about that. But, um. Eric, specifically for you, I have a question about, so typically you're involved in a lot of preschool content, especially now. So with something, with you working on Rugrats 2, do you take some of those Rugrats um, principles and put it into your work when you're trying to find the next best preschool program for Nick Jr. Um, I, I would say I, I, I would say I, I would hold the bar high for whatever preschool show we're bringing into Nickelodeon. And for one that it feels that it's on brand for what Nickelodeon represents. And conversely, Nickelodeon really represents what Nick, I mean, Rugrats really represents what Nickelodeon is about. You know, it's about, funny and friendship and characters you want to spend time with. And so we try to imbue that in all of our preschool shows to make sure that we have characters that are really dimensional. And, um, you know, obviously it's a different kind of storytelling for the younger audience. So we lean on more social, emotional learning for all our storytelling, um, which is Also in Rugrats, but embedded underneath all the comedy, probably it's not as obvious as it may be in a preschool show. But, you know, obviously our kids do learn something about the world, if if nothing more than navigating around Angelica. Um, So I'd say that's that's probably where it influences, Rugrats influences the preschool space the most for me. So, I mean... And I think it's really interesting that you say that because Rugrats was, it was for kids, but there were some moments in the original, same thing with this revival. They go, they got away with that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, um, it's a fun balance of, um, for children and adults. And um, how do you... How do you both find that balance of the comedy being for kids, but something that the adults can find a chuckle or a belly laugh at? Like, it's like, is there a fine line? Like, how do you balance it? Well, I think we, we, we usually have a B story that, well, we always have a B story with that involves the adults. And I think we try to be, we're not trying to like, you know, sneak stuff by or pull anything over that kids go over kids heads as much as put something that an adult will chuckle at, as you say, but also that is also funny for kids. You know, they, we, kids seem to like it when our adults um, do have, 
a sort of active, funny B story that they can, you know, look at and, and get the humor. So we try not to just be, you know, make the kind of comments that are just satirical or something. You know, we, we have a show coming up where uh, Stu and his dad get in a predicament that uh, where they're locked outside the house and he, trying to get in. And, it, be, you know, the kids we've showed it to really thought it was funny because it was just like adults, like out of control. And so we're not always, you know, we try to do things that will get the parents' attention, but not necessarily alienate the kids. Oh, yeah. I love the the one big happy family episode. Oh, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, that that goes a little edgy at times. That's classic rugger. Oh, that's so nice to hear. Yeah, we thought it. I mean, here's Grandpa Lou in Charlotte's bathtub. I mean, any adult would be horrified, but I think kids will find it funny too. Like Grandpa's eating pizza in the bathtub, you know. So uh, it um it it sort of um reminds me of the um. There was an episode in the original series where Angelica orders all this food using one of Sue's voice changers or whatever it was. So it's got like those classic, like, what are the, what's happening now? You know, what's next? I love the hijinks between the kids and the dogs. And that was a fun moment. And a fun episode. And it checked all of the boxes. Oh, thank you. I mean, I feel like if I was to show somebody Rugrats, this new iteration, if I didn't show them the pilot, I would show them that. Because it sets up the show in such a wonderful way. It's really cool to hear. Thank you, Bob. It's nice of you to say. On that note, if you were to explain Rugrats to someone who is living under a complete rock, who's never seen any, <laughs> who's never seen any article or any news or any movie, how would you describe Rugrats to them? Mm. And I ask that because it's so, it's so, it's so in our zeitgeist that mm. it'd be hard to explain it to someone without, you know, referencing something. Right. I, I would say it's, that's why it's, it's a show about the secret life of babies and their, their perception of the world around us that's, so much bigger than it really, than the world really is. That's such a good analogy. That's such a cool response to that because it's like around the time that Rugrats was brought onto our screens, things like Toy Story mm. were being developed. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens when we leave. People seem to really like that. You're right. Look at Secret Life of Pets. Yeah, we kind of think Rugrats was kind of paved the way for those situations where you, you know, open up to what, what the babies are doing and thinking. I feel like Rugrats is such a... It's, I mean, there are many shows now that are wall-to-wall -wall music and sound effects and all the crazy stuff. But at the core of it, Rugrats is just about friendship and getting into trouble whenever you don't expect to. You know, it's, 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 it's Nickelodeon at its core when it was kind of reimagined by Jerry Layborn and the folks over there. It's like, it's just kids being kids. And that's what Rugrats is. I, I think that is exactly right. And I think the other thing that just holds up is that we have a hero in Tommy. All the kids are great and they all are friends. But I, I hear people 
talk about Tommy well into their thirties that I'm a Tommy, I'm a Chucky, I'm a, you know, and I just think that grip, it, I mean, of course there's been heroes and, you know, every, lots of show, kids shows, but his innocence and his drive and his bravery it, is to see a hero in a diaper and you know, no, no pants is it. I just think he's made such an impression. And I just love how he goes along with it anything like even the one big happy family episode like angelica is throwing this weird marriage role play thing and he's like okay <laughs> like yeah so he's like down to do anything and it is it creates some of the best stories i mean i i really tommy is when I when I heard his voice for the first time in this in this iteration, I kind of welled up because it's like a a welcome home kind of approach to it, where it's like they know exactly what they're doing to make us happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I I just want to thank you for joining me today and having a good having a conversation with us. Oh, this is a pleasure. Thank you. Um, a really Thank pleasure. you. Thank you. And um, I'm happy that um, Rugrats has touched your life maybe twice. <laughs> That's... Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, uh, it's to the point where like I have like one of my first movie theater experiences that I vividly remember you know like you're taken to a movie but you really don't remember it why Rugrats in Paris hmm. I remember the theater I remember where we're sitting the whole bit wow cool. and I remember watching back to the 10th anniversary special the sitting on my couch eating ice cream with the whole family watching on pre- premiere night wow. so along with those other Rugrats event. This is an event too. Oh, that's super nice of you to say, Bob. That's really cool. And I can't wait to to hear more to see more stories. So, where can people check it out? The uh, the new series. Yes. So it's Paramount Plus. Um, so their episodes are there. Um, and there'll be more dropping in the near future. I'm so excited. So Paramount Plus is the way to get them now. Yes, for sure. For sure. But um, if you ever want to come back and just talk about any other upcoming projects you've got, I'd be happy to have you guys back. This has been such a joy. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks so much. This was super fun. Thank you. The DJ Bob Show. Pop culture, past and present. 